the benefit of working with a personal injury attorney is to make sure that your rights are protected. You know, anytime anyone has a, uh, a loss as a result of somebody else's negligence, meaning somebody else did wrong, and they're injured as a result of it, an injury is pretty broad. And we're talking about a, a strain on your back. We're talking about whiplash. We're talking about a possible broken bone. Any injury that's suffered, there's gonna be medical bills, you're gonna to need to, to miss work possibly, and you need an attorney to make sure that they're advocating for you to be properly compensated. So when it comes to personal injury cases, there is, as in all cases, what's called a statute of limitations. That means there's a period of time that a case must be brought. From the date of the injury or when a person knows about the injury until whatever date the state legislature says a case has to be pursued, that's that area, that's that statute of limitations. So if a person has an injury, if a person has an accident, if a person gets hit in a car, if a person has a slip and fall, there's a certain period of time that they have to pursue when they experience that, that, that harm and when they pursue a claim. So a person needs to know when that incident happened that caused their injury. Because if you don't know when your back started hurting or why, then we don't have an entity that we can send a letter to saying, hey, you did wrong and it's time to compensate our client for the wrong that you did. closer that one pursues a claim to the incident itself, the better the evidence that's preserved. I mean, let's just think about it. The further you get away from an incident, the harder it is to recall. The harder it is to catch up with witnesses that may have seen something happen. The harder it is to establish to a claims adjuster, to an insurance company, that the pain that you went and saw a doctor about two or three months after the incident happened was actually related to the incident or the event that caused your injury. So what evidence do you need? Well, at the time of whatever the event is that caused your injury, you need to, as much as possible, grab a journal, grab a piece of paper, a notebook, and start writing down names, start writing down places, start writing down as much as you can remember about what happened and how you were impacted by that incident. Because memories fade. And as we do litigation, as we try cases, two or three years goes by before it actually gets to court. And so you wanna have something that kind of memorializes what occurred, because you're gonna forget about it later. You also wanna have photographs of your injuries as much as possible. At the time of an incident happening, you wanna make sure that you take pictures of any bruises. Certainly if there are MRIs or x-rays, those photographs will be preserved. You also want to write down and get the phone numbers of any witnesses who can corroborate what you're saying is the reason that you uh, were injured in the first place. And you get that information and you put it away. It's always great for whoever it is that caused your injury to basically acknowledge or to admit that they were wrong and your injury was caused. It doesn't happen all the time, but that's fantastic evidence. It's an admission is what it's called. And that evidence is obviously extremely helpful to receiving compensation and to advocating uh, for the client later on. Um, cases for personal injury run the gambit from literally a, a thousand, a couple thousand dollars to several million dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, it, the level of compensation all depends on the nature of the injury and the nature of the medical treatment that the person receives. Because those are related to what's called pain and suffering. So if a person has a broken leg and they were previously um, you know, a, a, a weekly track runner, now they're not able to run track like they used to. They may have been competing in sports um, or they may have taken care of a, of a relative. Well, all of those activities that they're no longer able to engage in anymore are um, taken in consideration when the request for some type of compensation is made. In addition to the lost wages, in addition to the amount of the medical bills, in addition to the long-term impact of the injury itself, we also take in consideration what they've lost in their daily activities as a result 
of the injury that they've that they've suffered. So there is no set amount that can be declared as to how much someone can get. But the Cochrane firm's two primary concerns when we have a personal injury client is number one, that they get better, and number two, that they're properly compensated for the injury that they suffered. Locally and nationally, the Cochrane firm has been responsible for recovering literally billions of dollars for people who have been injured. And the way that we handle our personal injury cases and our civil rights cases, our truck accidents, our medical malpractice, we don't require any money up front. You don't have to come out of pocket to pay a lawyer from the Cochran firm to advocate on your behalf. We take those cases on something called a contingency which means we take a case believing that we will be successful recovering compensation for our injured client. And so we agree to uh, advance the fees. That could be expert witness fees, that could be medical records or, or bills or any type of money that's required to be spent to make sure that the case is successful. We'll, we'll, we'll front those fees. And we only recover after we've been successful advocating and recovering compensation on your behalf.